You're listening to the Blues Radio International Podcast. On Blues Radio International, we're here at the 2023 Blues Music Awards in Memphis with the president of the Blues Foundation, Kimberly Horton. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Well, it's it's a pleasure for us. We uh, all benefit from the fact that the Blues Foundation is under your stewardship, and uh, we know this has been uh, a year for you getting adjusted and new. How, how's it been taking over the helm of the foundation? It's been fun. It's been interesting. I, I came in running. I mean, when I first came to Memphis, I didn't even have a place to stay. I just came here and started working. I mean, came in running because I came in right in the middle of IBC planning. So I didn't have time to get adjusted. I still haven't had time to get adjusted, but it's been it's been a ride, but I've enjoyed every bit of it. So I'm. my son and I are finally feeling like, okay, this is home. This is where we live. So it's 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 finally leveling out a little bit. That's great. What were the biggest challenges for you in undertaking this job? Finding the dead bodies that I didn't want to find and 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 uh, coming up with a plan to fix how to fix it. Um, not knowing what I was messed up or what was torn up or what needed to be fixed. Um, that was the biggest thing. Just not knowing what, I mean, I knew what I was getting into, but I didn't know what I was getting into. But it's all been taken in, in stride and in, in, with, in love of what it is and what we do. So I'm enjoying every bit of it and just moving with it. Well, part, part of this job is obviously running the foundation and keeping the two signature events, the International Blues Challenge and the Blues Music Awards, up and running. But after that, we've got to look toward the future. And mm-hmm. where do you see the future of the foundation and its role with this music? You're right. We got to look to the future. Well, one of my big goals is to get more young people involved with the foundation to take us to the next level of uh, stewardship in the blues. You know, because if we don't have them, I know you and I talked about this briefly. If we, if we don't have the younger generation involved, you know, wh- where will we be? I want to get uh, more young people of color involved so that they can uh, learn to appreciate you know, their history, their heritage. So I see us, you know, in the future of being a still very strong foundation, a still a very strong entity, but maybe larger uh, with other outlets to help more in the community. And, you know, we help more, we help a lot now, but I see us being uh, in a broader spectrum because we will have a different outlook of things. We we, we want to come up to the future of things, do things or have things in the museum that will attract the younger people to come. And that's something that I am actively working on right now. What are the ways do you think we can get people interested who aren't introduced to the blues? Because the blues seems like a vestige of the past to some people or, or something that... Uh, has no relevance today. How, how do you communicate that? There again, the young people. Uh, my son is 16 and he's able to explain to his peers, you know, what the blues is, why the blues is. And, and, and the way he, we, we have to do things at, at the level of their understanding so that they will understand. So I would be happy to do what my son does. Hey, that music you're listening to or that line that you just heard, do you know that came from Muddy Waters' song or do you know that came from Howlin' Wolf's song? And they they may not know who Muddy Waters is or who Howlin' Wolf is, but at that point it strikes the interest for them to go find out who they are. And that's kind of how it starts. So I know that education, blues education is key. Bringing back the blues in the school program, uh, bringing back other outlets that will bring the younger generation interested in what we are and and helping them to understand what Willie Dixon said, the root, the blues is the roots, everything else is the fruit. So being able to teach them how that correlates to what they listen to now and what they're doing now will have uh, a way of give them a better understanding of what it is and how they got to where they are. You've represented blues musicians and you've had involvement in this community before coming to this job, which gives you a unique perspective. And how do you think the world has 
moved with artists in the blues community since the pandemic. That threw everyone off their game. We had to recalibrate so many things. What's going on with the musicians and what's the role of the foundation in helping them? Oh my gosh, we have been able to help so many uh, through the Heart Fund. Um, at the time we had the COVID-19 Relief Fund, which is no longer. We are currently operating that um, as the Blues Musicians Emergency Relief Fund now. So with everyone being out of work, including the Blues Foundation, we were able to help people keep their homes, help them keep their lights on, help them keep their cars. So now that they are back kind of sort of working regularly, a lot of those musicians have turned around and given back to the Heart Fund. They've turned around and given back to Generation Blues so that kind of like paying it forward so they can help the next musician. So we seem to be going back in the right direction. I mean, COVID isn't gone anywhere, but it's it, we're in a place now where we can at least, you know, see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit now. What do you think is the uh, picture longer term for how you're going to develop this broader audience. I mean, this is, it's a great plan. It's what we need. The demographic is not a positive one. We've got uh, not a young population necessarily that comprises our core blues fans. And mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you see as the path to uh, bringing us to a point where we've got beyond our blues in the schools, actually getting musicians on the stage and getting people in the seats here at the Blues Music Awards who are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s? I am looking to develop an uh, a artist ambassador program, which will give those artists entitlement to go out and recruit for the Blues Foundation. So many musicians don't even know we exist. So if they get it from... Uh, say sip or johnny rawls or you know and they won't be one age bracket of artists we're going to go from dylan triplet up to the oldest somebody that's out there so that way we'll reach all audiences all demographics so that's that's the one one big thing i am looking to launch uh here pretty soon that will help bring awareness we're going to have to change some things at the um uh, at the foundation as well but you know they'll they'll Long term, long term goals of changes and bringing more technology in, you know, more interesting things in to where they will, you know, more interactive things that will attract the younger. I mean, because they're they're playing games, so they want to. If we bring it down to where they can understand it or something that they can interact with to learn, we we can grow. We can grow the community. Yeah, it seems like the short form, uh, as far as technology. Uh -huh and getting the information out. It's, you know, the TikToks, the reels, those first 15 to 30 seconds. So crucial. Is, and, and I used to scoff at it. I used to think that, you, I, you know, that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. you know, we're documentarians. We give people the full package. Well, I realize there's two sides to that, that there's the, the, the historical portion of it where everything is saved for posterity mm -hmm. in the highest possible way. And then there's the social aspect. And separating those two is something that I've done here for Blues Radio International. And it seems to be working mm -hmm. as far as getting that interaction with the younger crowd. Yep. And I've noticed that those numbers as far as like that, say, like 18 to 45 group, it's, you know, it's 16 percent of, you know, the people that consume our stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's still it's better than the three percent that we had a couple of years ago. So I've noticed that 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 is something that we've sort of latched on to to get the oh, blues yeah. message out. And I'm curious, like what? is a situation that you've had where you've had to explain what the Blues Foundation is and what it does and you've maybe enlightened someone about <laughs> its mission. <laughs> Every time somebody says, hey, you left Jackson, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm, I'm running the Blues Foundation. What is that? What do y'all do? Quite frequently. So I'm constantly explaining what the Blues Foundation is, who we are, why we're, there, why we're here. Um, because like I said, you know, so people don't know we exist. 
there are people right here in Memphis that don't know we exist. We just had some folks come to the museum a couple of weeks ago and they said, we didn't even know this was, we, this was here. I've been in Memphis 40 years. I didn't even know this place was here. So I am constantly, this is what we do. We preserve the hair. We're preserving the heritage and the history of the blues. We are giving musicians the lifetime achievement award of being inducted into the real blues hall of fame. We are teaching uh younger musicians what life is in the music industry i mean it, i just go on and on and on and oh we never knew that existed you know we're not as big as some of the other foundations but we're we're here and we're we're growing going upward and onward and forward so it's like every time i tell somebody where i work i'm explaining if they don't yeah. if they aren't in the if they aren't in the blues community i'm i'm explaining who we are, what I am, what I do, you know, so. How would you describe the Blues Museum, the, the Blues History Museum that's at the Blues Foundation office? How would you describe that to someone who had no idea what it was like? I, the first thing I tell them is I love going to work every day because I love looking at what I look at every day. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. I, I love it. So it's, I, I tell everybody, it's like you have to experience it. Walking down that hallway, looking at things, artifacts that belong to people that we really look up to, or we really like, I'm a, I am love Howlin' Wolf. So just knowing, oh my gosh, this, this is the suitcase that he carried, or this is the hat Muddy wore, or it, it's just, I tell them all the time, you have to come see it. You don't know what you're missing. There's so much history that's just right there. And I just, I love it. So I, I, I can sell it to anybody because I love it. I love going to work every day. So that's why I told you I run down the hall. I'm like, wow, yeah. I love this. I mean, it's just, I love it. <laughs> you get your blood pumping in many, many various ways. Yes. And that's an exciting thing when you can go to your job and have a mission, but still manage to smile. Yes. And keep it as low stress as possible. I know that there's no job that's devoid of stress, but it, it, it's it's good stress. Mm -hmm. It is. You're, you're bringing, you know, something to the world that is essential. Yes. Yes. And, and, and it's just knowing that, you know, it's here. It's here. I'm here. We're here. And to be able to live in it and feel it and just I just love all of it. So. When I tell them like that, they, oh, well, I got to come, well, I got to come check that out, you know. So I actually had somebody come in uh, Monday, bumped into into the, in the mall, and they were like, what? and I was telling them about it, and it was like, they actually came. They came down, huh? They came, and they was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I've been missing this, you know, because each little case has so much history. You know, it's maybe a small display, but the history in that small display or why that display is there, just learning that or listening to, you know, the reels that are playing or pushing the buttons on the interactives that we have now is so, it's just wonderful. It's a great education tool. I was just imagining, like, say there's, you're, you met your friend in the mall mm -hmm. and in the mall, they have these vignettes. They have the the dealers with the little carts and exactly. things. Exactly. They maybe have some pop up Blues Foundation museum artifacts, like in the mall, like say for like a weekend, and like that could be really interesting, especially like to get the get on the radar of the young people because mm -hmm. they're like, wow, look at that. And I'm just I'm just imagining that that like That's all a great sorts idea. of That's cool a great things idea. like that could. Just to, or even if it was like a video, like that could be really cool. Like I'm imagining you like standing there explaining like what the the full bloom museum is like, and I I'm, I'm excited to hear some of your ideas that you have for for the foundation. What and the videos are coming. Okay, yeah, <laughs> those videos are coming. Uh, that's something that we had talked about doing. I, uh, you know, I was on the board. I've been on the board twice for the Blues Foundation, so. Um, that's something that we did talk about doing and of course COVID hit, so it didn't get done, but we are getting ready to pick that up to do the little short snippet videos to, you know, bring awareness and, and, and give blues education 
to the public regarding the Blues Foundation. They need it if they don't even know it. Yes. <laughs> you, you, if you, it's like if you build it, they will come. I yes, think. exactly. I absolutely believe in that 100%. And that is absolutely true because we, we, we have a great presence, but we don't have the presence that we have the potential to have. So um, I've been able to get some great relationships with other museums and they're supporting us, we're supporting them. And it's just, it's made a lot of a difference. So, you know, the collaboration is important. So you can't do it all by yourself. You have to have some type of partnership, some type of collaboration. And those partnerships and collaborations have been great and continuing to build them so that we can continue to spread awareness of us being at 421 South Main Street. Yeah, <laughs> thank goodness you're there. Those are the exact words I was going to use, collaborative <laughs> and partnership. Yes. What do you think is the most important reason that people should become a member of the Blues Foundation? It's not that expensive. It's an easy thing to do, and it supports the music and the musicians. But if you had to explain to someone in a few words, what would be the, the main point? I would, I would help them to understand that they would be part of making history. And, and that is preserving the history of the history. And then to being a member, you are helping another musician. Um, unfortunately, so many musicians don't have health insurance. They don't have uh, burial insurance. And we've taken care of so many of those things. So when we explain to them, hey, you, you can help the Heart Fund. You can help Generation Blues. You can help, you know, help get us um uh, take us to the next level of getting technology into the uh, museum. Normally when those things come up, it's a no, they, it's a, it's a done deal, you know, cause I, <laughs> I was able, I sold like 53 memberships in one day from my phone. So it's like when I talk to them and I get them out, cause I'm excited about it. So I, it kind of, it's rubs contagious, off on yeah. Right? yeah. So they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you. We, yeah. We want to do it. So they do it. So memberships are really growing. Um, they've grown tremendously in the last in this last seven months. Well, that's great. We want to thank you for all the great work you've done. We know this is a very busy day. It's the most important night of the blues in the year uh, that we've got coming up with the Blues Music Awards. Yes. And well, tonight's important too. Yeah. Hall of Fame induction. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we really. We look forward to these great events and uh, continuing onward. What's the mission for the next 12 months for you? Well, I'm going to make some changes. <laughs> but the mission is to really, the mission seriously is to take us to the next level, to take us to the next level. We want to grow um, and uh, become a larger entity than what we are. You know, get some different things going on so that we can have you know, um, a a bigger, better, brighter presence, you know, to the community, not just the blues community, but as a whole, to the community as a whole. And not just here in Memphis, because we aren't, we aren't just Memphis. I mean, we are international. We want to make a bigger presence everywhere. Well, thank you, Kimberly, for joining us on Blues Radio International. Thank Thank you for your stewardship of the Blues Foundation. We know it's in good hands. And we look forward to seeing you at the Blues Hall of Fame inductions and the Blues Music Awards. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right. Blues Radio International uses the power of AM shortwave to broadcast to over 184 countries around the world. It is truly amazing what the power of the blues can do. Blues Radio International provides live blues to over 184 countries around the world. 24 hours a day. BluesRadioInternational.net is where you can find everything that we are up to. www.BluesRadioInternational.net. I'm Audrey Michelle for Blues Radio International. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Welsh Ledbetter connection. Monster Mike Welch, Mike Ledbetter. And you are listening to Blues Radio International. Keeping the blues alive. I'm talking about Blues Radio International. 